Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we will get it working. So I'm going to go ahead and we will begin the semester officially with an introduction by Dr. Boyd Lispy, a welcome, an introduction of who he is, in case someone in, in our class does not know. And, uh, and then he will open us in a word of prayer. So welcome to TH615. This is a CGS a uh, CGST class course, Biblical Theology. And so uh, um, welcome, and I will turn it over to Dr. Boyet. Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, as uh, Tim mentioned, I'm connected with Cebu Graduate School of Theology, or CGST. And for those who don't know me yet, uh, I'm currently serving as the academic dean of the seminary. And uh, we are grateful that uh, the Lord has led us to have a partnership with uh, Eastern Visayas School of Theology in Leyte Samar and Bilirin Islands. And of course, you know Pastor Henry Kwa and Tim Spears and how they have spearheaded this ministry. And then we want to be part of what God is doing in, in these areas uh, because we, we need more uh, Christian leaders to be trained and equipped. And, uh, and many of these people, you guys, uh, maybe you're beyond our, our reach at, at, in, in, in Cebu area. So EVST will be responsible in, in equipping more leaders in Leyte, Samar, and Biliran Islands, and even beyond as the Lord enables you. So welcome, welcome, and thank you for joining this class. Some of you have, have taken this uh, with credit for CGST and others. Uh, it's, it's under EVST, so uh, this is a good thing. So wherever... <laughs> You are in your registration. Uh, I believe that uh, the Lord will also use this class in order to help equip you uh, for your own personal enrichment and also for uh, the, the ministry. And as I mentioned earlier, this is an exciting class because it, it will actually broaden your understanding of theology of God's revelation to man from Adam to Christ. And so this is a very big, uh, th there's a very big scope for this class that I, I trust that uh, our professor, uh, Sir Tim, or what, however you will call him, Tim, Sir Tim, Tim. bro, Tim, Tim, <laughs> so whatever he, he likes you to call him, that, that's it. <laughs> so maybe he doesn't like a very formal uh, <laughs> title here, Kui, but Kuya, no, or Kuya, no. For many of you, you can call <laughs> him fine. Kuya. It's fine. Yeah. So, and he he like he he calls me Kuya. He calls Sir Ricky Kuya. So. Yeah, that's, that's also okay in, in our context. And so before I'll, I'll pray for the class, let me just uh, introduce a little bit your professor here. Uh, he's uh, an ordained minister to the gospel by the International Christian Fellowship and currently a missionary with Converts Worldwide, if you're familiar with that group. Uh, in, in America, uh, I think if you know John Piper, he's a very famous uh, pastor connected with this group no, in America. And here in the Philippines, uh, it's the BCP, uh, a Baptist General Conference, um, Baptist Conference of the Philippines that was started by the BGC Baptist General Conference in America. And now we have a new name, it's Converge Philippines, not Converges. Kailahim na Converges, no? Familiar most Converges. So uh, Tim, he finished his Bachelor of Science major in Mechanical Engineering and minor in Mathematics from Pensacola Christian College. That's in Florida, yeah. and he finished his Master of Divinity from Calvary Baptist Theological Seminary. That's from Pennsylvania, USA, and then Master of Theology and Biblical Studies uh, with a major of New Testament from a very famous, world-famous seminary, Westminster Theological Seminary in Pennsylvania, USA as well. Some of you are familiar with that seminary. and. The famous Westminster. So I wish I could also go there and and, and study in that area. <laughs> but right now, and, uh, as a missionary, he's focused more on and the equipping ministry, of course, in partnership with Pastor Henry, and he's a teacher at Eastern Visaya School of Theology. I don't have to introduce that school to you because you're very familiar with that already. So Tim, thank you so much for your availability and for this partnership. And I, I'm glad that it, it somehow expanded the ministry, the reach of CGST uh, through our partnership with EVST. Uh, 
Yeah. So may the Lord bless you continually. I know it's it's a very challenging uh, semester for you because you have a new addition to the family of yeah. baby, and that's a game changer, right? <laughs> For those yeah. who have who have babies, like uh, Pastor Red Fernand, uh, new baby. So you can identify with the challenges uh, that your professor uh, is experiencing. But we know that by God's grace, He will sustain all of you through and through. Amen. And so we're praying not just for our professor, but also for all of you and your families, your ministries, and let's also pray for a good um, semester together. Now, this is a good journey uh, of loving God more and more and understanding Him and His revelation and responding to that accordingly. So let us just spend time praying and uh, uh, committing this to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you're the God who revealed yourself to us and ultimately through your son Jesus Christ uh, the perfect revelation uh, of, of, of yourself to us and thank you Lord Jesus that you willingly came and you demonstrated through your life and through your death burial and resurrection uh, and then you because of that you have um, uh, accomplished uh, the salvation for us and so I pray for this class that as they continue to uh, dig deeper and study the various themes from the Old Testament down to the New Testament, that they will have a deeper appreciation of, of your goodness, of your grace, of your loving kindness, of, of who you are in their life. They will respond accordingly to each of these revelations. They will learn through your word. So as they discuss, Lord, give them humility, give them wisdom, give them also the, the grace to respond uh, positively uh, to to you and to your word and thank you for uh, Professor Tim for for his availability and for how you have equipped him in the past and even in the present so that he can also help these um, pastors and leaders or developing leaders in their own equipping as well so I'm praying for your blessing an abundant blessing for each one of them for every family, for every ministry that is represented in this class, Lord, you know the, the challenges that they're facing. And I'm praying that you'd give them the inner strength and the wisdom that they need so they can overcome those challenges by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they will learn uh, to submit to your will, whatever it is. And I pray that you would sustain them through and through and deliver them from the evil one. And I also pray that you would give them, the, uh, even with their internet connection, Lord, we're praying for that as well that you sustain it, that they will have a good internet connection every time they meet so that their discussion will be unhindered and they can, um, every single week as they read the assignments and respond to the lectures, that this will be a good learning experience for them, that they will be changed and that they can glorify you uh, through this exercise. So thank you, thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, uh, Dr. Boyet is going to leave our class now, but I just really want to, to thank you publicly and just to say that, uh, you, know, you know, Converge has been in the Philippines for 60 years. Uh, Dr. Boyet, Dr. Ricky, you're like, you've been in ministry way longer than me. And so we, we really view this as, as a partnership. In many ways, we can learn so much together from you. And we're just looking forward to uh, the next the next phase of ministry. We want to see Converge Philippines expand, grow. We want to partner um, as, as equal, equal co-laborers uh, in this harvest field. So God bless you, Dr. Boyet, and we will for sure stay in touch, so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now we are, by God's grace, going to try to do this. Welcome to Biblical Theology. Uh, the blossoming of God's revelation from Adam to Christ. And so I hope that this will be a picture that you can be reminded of throughout the semester. There's significance in, in this flower. And if you can, maybe it's not, not so clear below, but there's a seed. So there's a seed and there's a flower. And so I hope that this picture will really, uh, we'll always be coming back to this picture, to viewing, um, the big picture of biblical theology. And so um, by way of introduction, TH 615 biblical theology. And so session number one, 
will be review of the syllabus and also introductory issues. So that will be tonight's session by God's grace. We will not finish introductory issues tonight uh, because we will also, um, we will continue it next week. And so just a quick review as Dr. Boyett had mentioned, this is really a partnership. And so we have Converge, Converge US, Converge Philippines, and then Baptist, uh, uh, Cebu Graduate School of Theology, Baptist Theological College, and new since last year, Eastern Visayas School of Theology. So the, we are in partnership. And so we want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, this is by the grace of God that we're coming together to study. And so I want to stress tonight and moving forward, uh, Paul, Paul challenges us not to have rivalry, not to be doing things in competition. Uh, Philippians, it's a big theme in Philippians for us to be considering each other. So we are not rivals. We are not in competition with any other ministry, with any other school. We are partners. We're co-laborers in the field. And, and the one who gets all the credit is God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. So just by way, a quick overview of the session, there's actually one other thing that we will be, we will be adding here. And so uh, number one, we already heard from, from Dr. Boyette. We had an introduction from Dr. Boyette. Uh, next, we're going to actually, before we review the syllabus, we're going, every, I want everyone to introduce themselves so that everyone is, um, we can have an official introduction between classmates and also um, teacher and then uh, as well, the administrator and leader for Eastern Visayas School of Theology. And then after that, we will review the syllabus. Um, probably between there, we'll take a break, a short break. Then we'll, we will have a discussion of the reading. So those of you that had to read, there was a reading assignment due tonight. So we will discuss that. Uh, next, we will have, we will begin the course notes. So by God's grace, we will begin the course notes. We're already a half an hour in, but by God's grace, we can continue the course notes. Okay, so at this time, let us actually go ahead and have, uh, before we do the review of the syllabus, let's have introductions. So yes, great, we have it. Oh, I'm so happy. So I hope everyone can see this. And so I hope it's clear for you. And so this is our syllabus. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, just scroll down to our syllabus here. Uh, these are some other notes that maybe later I will share with you, but this is my, um, this document here is the, the teacher's edition. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and just work through the syllabus. I'm just gonna bring your attention to several different things as we talk through it. And you can ask your question uh, if you have a question. So as we, as we work through here, just general information that all of you need to be aware of for communication. Um, uh, you have here at the top, my email address and also my Facebook name. So if you're not friends with me, I think everyone's friends with me. This is the quickest way to, to contact me through Facebook Messenger or also through email, timothys at converge.com. And so also you will submit all of your assignments to timothys at converge.com as well. Okay, now I have, my name is listed Reverend Timothy Spears, but, but that's just, uh, that's that's a formal. I I do not want to be called Reverend. You know, if you wanted to call me Pastor Tim, that's fine. If you want to call me Kuya Tim, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, I don't prefer Sir Tim, but if you call me Sir Tim, you know, I will accept it. So Kuya Tim or Pastor Tim, that that's that's fine. Um, uh, you know, I'm not big on on on, on names. So. Uh, uh, the course will be from January 2021 to May. So we will have 16 sessions. So uh, tonight is the first session. So there will be 16 times we meet. So if there's a holiday or we have, to, we have to cancel class for some reason, we will either reschedule it later in the week or we'll push it back. And so if, if we had to reschedule it and you could not attend, that's fine. Uh, every class will be recorded and then put on YouTube. And so you can watch it later at your convenience. So. Uh, the semester will go from January 2021 to May uh, May, uh, 20, uh, May 2021, okay? Introduction, I'll just read the introduction here. Biblical theology is a three unit graduate level course which introduces the student to the specific discipline of biblical theology. 
That is the history of Revelation. Firstly, the course will highlight important prerequisite introductory issues. Uh, secondly, it will outline the history of Revelation. Lastly, it will introduce the students to a method for studying, tracing, and developing other theological themes, concepts, and topics from a biblical theological perspective and framework. So I just really want to highlight here several things. First is that that is really fundamental. If, if you were to say, what is biblical theology? It's, it's studying the history of Revelation. Okay. Now, now from this study, we have we, we, we develop a method, we can apply it to different themes, but fundamentally, biblical theology is the study of the history of Revelation, okay? Everything else is a result, okay? Um, and, and really, if we're going to go very specific and technical, technical, we would want to include, we would want to include this idea of, we want to include this idea of special, okay? So it's, it's, um, it's the history of special revelation. We will not discuss that. We will touch. We will just briefly touch on natural revelation, but our, the focus is really special revelation. Okay, um, but oftentimes we just we we the general term is revelation. God God revealing Himself to to us, and so you could say special, or you could just say generally uh, revelation. the The primary content of the course will be this history of revelation both mode and content, okay? Mode and content. Now, now in looking at this, you notice here that we say lastly here, we say lastly, we are going to, um, we're going to, to study this method here. Now, I will introduce you to this method, um, Lord willing, next week. Okay, so the plan, the plan of attack, you can see in your outline, is we're going to do introductory issues number one. I'm going to introduce you to the method. You're going to choose groups, and you're going to start. I'm going to give you specific details because you will start practicing tracing a different theme. Okay, and then at by the end of the course, we will discuss how you develop different themes. Um, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to give you some guidance, but we'll really discuss that method at the end. Now, maybe you would say, you know, why are you doing it like that? Um, part of it's because we're following the textbook. That, that's a big part. And then another part is that you really have to study the history of Revelation before we really study the method. So all the questions of why or for what purpose that will really come at the end for the method, okay? But I'm going to give you the method itself. You know, even tonight, if I gave you the method, you could do the method. It's not, it's not really difficult. Now, of course, you have questions, the different questions, why, um, for what purpose, what's the result, all those different questions you want to ask. We will say those questions till the end. So essentially what I'm saying is next week, here's the method. Trust me, and then we can discuss it later, okay? Because in, in an ideal world, we would just do history of revelation and then we would go on and discuss the method. But I want you to practice the method and you can't practice the method at the end. It's already the end of the course. So, so you will start working through the method. Now, of course, maybe you have questions and we can meet and I can answer some of those questions. Okay. So it's not, you know, it's not really an either or, but I just, I do want to offer that, that caveat. Any questions about this introduction? Is this, is this making sense to you so far? Any questions or comments? Okay, it, it should be self-explanatory, okay? So, um, uh, uh, course, course objectives, course objectives. By the end of this class, the student should have a, the student should be, ha, be able to understand and, and explain fundamental preconditions for approaching scripture. The introductory issues, especially what we will discuss next week, are so fundamental, okay? So, so you know, people say, I just, you know, go into the, the about, okay, fair enough, but you, you have to understand those, those important preconditions, and, and it's going to be biblical, biblically based, but that's one of the goals of this class. So 
when I say introductory issues, you're like, okay, I'll just wait. I'll wait till the history of Revelation. No, the, the preconditions are so fundamental to going down the right path. And, and you'll see, you'll see as we work through those, those, um, those uh, preconditions, you'll see that they're biblical. You'll see that they're really necessary. And so, um, uh, but that is one of the goals that I want you to understand. Number two, you'll have an, you'll understand and have a working knowledge of the framework and major content of the history of Revelation. So the second goal is for you to really understand that framework. The big picture as the big picture as uh, Dr. Boyet, Koya Boyet mentioned. Um, so that's a second purpose for the course. And then the last purpose is for you to be able to trace a theme uh, through scripture using biblical theology. So uh, very practical, very practical, okay? Um, some, uh, some people only preach expository sermons. And, 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 I, and I really believe, I think expository preaching, it should be our bread and butter when it comes to preaching. And when I say expository preaching, we're referring to expository and then, of course, the other type is topical, okay? Um, you can preach topical, and, and, I, and there's a context for preaching topical, um, but the way I would call topical, it's more biblical theological. <laughs> so, so when you talk about topical, people just pick a topic, and then they're going all over. They're going all over and giving many different passages. And so I, I, I want to I, I tweak that and say, um, let's preach a biblical theological theme, if that's making sense. And so if you have the biblical theological framework, topical can be quite beneficial. Um, and actually, does anyone, anyone, I'll ask this question, anyone, the famous biblical theological sermon in scripture, in Acts, does anyone, can anyone guess? Famous, infamous, biblical theological. There's actually several. There's actually several there, but one really stands out. The coming of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Stephen. Okay, yeah, Stephen. Who, who, who said it? Who said that? Who said Stephen? Who was that? Who was Andrew. that last man? Where is it? Who said that? Who said it? Chalmers, you get the gold star for tonight. Yeah. Yeah, Chalmers, Scholar. Stephen. Stephen <laughs> Sermon. It's biblical theological. He's the, the main point is. You're always stubborn, hard of heart, and you're always disobeying, the, and you're killing the prophets. He's like, and then he goes biblical theological. He goes, he traces the, the, the theme of a stubborn, hard, unbelieving heart of the Israelites, and it culminates in his murder. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a theme, a hard heart. <laughs> that's a topic, hard heart, hard, unbelieving heart. And so um, uh, we cannot really go into that. That would be another class. <laughs> okay. But I hope that you can see that this is very practical. We will go very deep. If you were reading, you could see how deep the reading is, but it's also very practical, okay? It would be very practical in your maybe sermon prep and also your, your teaching. Uh, and so I, 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 want, I want us to see that here. Okay, moving along here, textbooks, textbooks. So your primary textbook, the primary textbook, Biblical theology, Old and New Testaments. Uh, this is uh, number one. <laughs> number one. This is uh, number one. This is number two. This is number three. Uh, so what I'm what I'm saying here is that uh, later we will start creating a a a, 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 a you know the most important by uh, the most important book in the history of the world is the Bible, and then there's other important books that you should read as well. Okay, and so um, we will slowly create a list over time for for EVST students, for BTC CGS CGST students. Um, top five, top five. This is one of them. Top five. This is one of them. Okay, top five. This is one of them. Um, so that's our textbook. It's going to be a hard read. You're going to read over and over and over again. And is someone trying to get in? Hold on here. Ah, Ray. Um, you're going to, you're going to read it over and over again. It's going to be hard. You know, this first chapter, people were saying there was nothing you disagreed with. And that's great to hear. 
But the reality is eventually you will read something that you will disagree. There's several things that I read and I was like, oh, I disagree with him on that, okay? So um, uh, you should have a good reason for disagreeing with Voss. <laughs> So, and it should be few, it should be few. But what I, I do, I do want to say is that we do always need to be on guard that we are not idolizing uh, men, okay? If you idolize Voss, you will be let down, okay? With that being said, we should respect and consider those men of God that God has used greatly. And so Voss is one of those great men of God. Your hardest Voss, he is uh, Dutch. So he's, his first language is not English. That's partly why it's so hard to read. Um, but your hardest Voss is a spirit-filled man of God, a, a theologian, a scholar, someone who stood, uh, who stood as a beacon against, someone who stood as a beacon against liberalism at Princeton University back in the early 19th, uh, early 20th century, late 19th century into the 20th century, I think early 20th century. Um, and so uh, we should respect and, and, and um, um, but not idolize, okay? Respect, but not idolize, okay? And so that's our primary textbook that you have access on the, the, Google, the, Google, the Google Drive, the PDF. Um, uh, um, please do not share that PDF. That PDF is only for students here, and it's all, and 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 it's designed because you have a physical copies that are coming, and so um, uh, I don't want you to be sharing the PDF. Um, now, if you buy a copy or you get a free copy, then then you can you can use it. So only share the PDF if the person buys or has a physical copy. We want we do want to respect the the, the copyright the copyright. Um, uh, rules and requirements. So if you have a physical copy, um, you can use the PDF. The PDF is in place until the physical copy comes. Um, but I don't want you to be massively sending it out. Okay, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, um, especially coming from the Google Drive. If you received it from the Google Drive, do not share it with anyone else. If, if they want access, they can reach out to us. Uh, we do have a publisher in, in UK that's, that's, that's gonna send the books. Uh, um, um, there's no fee really, except for, for shipping and then also for, for um, shipping and then also for uh, handling, handling fee, okay? But I don't want you just sharing it with other people, send them to us, okay? Um, uh, if you find a PDF somewhere else, then that's whatever you do with that PDF, that's fine. That, I'm not referring to if you have a, a PDF from, from some other source, I'm referring specifically if you download the PDF from our Google Drive, okay? I just, I ask that you respect that. Um, the second book is Theophany, A Biblical Theology of God's Appearing by Ver Boy Ver uh, Vern S. Poitras. This is the second book. It's only required for the MAT and the CGST MAT students. And uh, this is, if you can imagine, this is the, this is the, the, um, the method. This is the method and also um, like like the textbook technically. And then this is an application applied. So is everyone tracking with me the difference between the two? So we should have different expect expectations and we should have different purposes for these two books, okay? Voss's is a textbook. It's dealing with method. Um, and then Vern Poitras, a theophany, a biblical theology of God's appearing, is applying, is applying the, the method, okay? Um, that book is available on that website, uh, poitrasframe.org. You can download it. You can print it out. It's, it's, it's the author. Um, I think the only stipulation is don't sell it for money. Okay, unless they're only paying for the expense to print it. Okay, that's the time that you can sell it, but but not for profit, not to collect, uh, not to collect the profit on it. Okay, so um, uh, cloud research tool, and then also Step Bible and Step Bible we we talked about before. I will share some videos. Um, I will share some videos on our Facebook group on how to use Step Bible. If you took hermeneutics last semester with me. You have a working knowledge on Step Bible, okay? 
but you will be using Step Bible to do your searches as you search a theme, okay? So it's really important that you learn Step Bible. There's videos, both we did a workshop on Step Bible, and then there's also videos produced by Step Bible on YouTube. I'm going to share both links to both of those on our Facebook group, okay? It's important that you start using and understand how to use Step Bible. Now, if you have a paid subscription or you have a paid software, Bible software, you can use that, okay? But you need to have a, a, a Bible software that you can do word searches, you can do topic searches, okay? That is the one requirement, all right? All right, so um, here's the course outline. I'm not going to go through here. You have the course outline in front of you. I'm not gonna go through all, the, all of these different things. Um, I may make adjustments as the semester goes. So never fear if, if our outline changes at the end of the semester, you will get a copy of the final outline. Um, it's just because as we work through the notes, I might make a change on the fly. Um, uh, so just be aware. I think I've already made one change. <laughs> I've already made one, I've added something, okay? But just to be aware that, that this outline may change in, in minor ways. I might just add something, okay? But we're just moving here with introductory issues and then introductory issues. And then the second major part is how to trace a theme using biblical theology. So that's the second major point. And then the third major point is the history of revelation. Okay. And so this is, this is the big outline. And then the fourth and last major point will be just an overview of uh, major biblical theological themes and their relationship to sub themes. So typically, um, these are three major themes, even in these three major themes. Um, what I'm trying to say is on these major themes is that covenant kingdom and God's presence. I mean, even in these three themes, they are interrelated. Okay. So it's not independent themes, but these are three major themes in the word of God. And then all of the other themes, any, pretty much any other theme that you can think about is a subcategory of these major themes. So just to give you an idea here. Let's, let's take the idea of, of, of Jerusalem, um, or we could say the city of God. That, that's a theme throughout scripture, okay? That's a sub of kingdom, right? So God's kingdom, Jerusalem is the capital, okay? It's the city, all right? The heavenly Jerusalem, okay? so so. The theme of city of God is actually a sub theme of the broader theme of kingdom. Think about sin. Where does sin fit? The expression. <laughs> yeah, no, so sin, so sin is related to here, and it's also related to covenant, right? Within the covenant, you have the law. Uh, we'll discuss this later. God is in, in every relationship that God has. He is in relationship with his creatures, and there's a law that binds. There's requirements that bind. For those who took Bible's big story, we saw that last semester. And so sin is a subcategory. It could be in relationship to God's presence, but it's really in relate. There's also a big theme of, of within covenant. Transgression is all within the context of law. Judgment, right? So let's look at the, this idea of judgment, right? Judgment, the theme of judgment is present in here, it's also present in here, and it's also in present in covenant, okay? Um, and it's really in covenant, okay? So what I'm trying to help us to see is that many of these sub-themes are in fact part of these larger themes. And so what theologians will often do is they will think about, they will say, what is the big theme of scripture, okay? And so now I've given three different themes they will try to they will try to make one theme one uh, comprehensive theme okay is there, so is everyone tracking there with me with what I'm saying here so um, uh, uh, th th this is so we could have so this is what I'm trying to get at this semester we're dealing with the foundation of biblical theology. And then we could have electives. We could discuss the different themes. We could we could have a whole course on what is the major theme. 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so the, the, with, with biblical theology, it's really the sky is the limit. It's almost like systematic, right? You have systematic theology and then you have all the different doctrines. So you can have a class on Christology. You can have a class on theology proper. You can have a, a class on soteriology, right? Or you could have one introduction to doctrine or introduction to systematic theology where it lays it out, okay? And so in some ways it's like this as well in biblical theology. So maybe you're seeing a whole new world. Maybe there's a whole new world that you're seeing for the first time. And so uh, it was revolutionary in my thinking that I had never considered before. And so um, biblical theology is really a fundamental part of, of our study, okay? Uh, any questions or comments before I go on? I don't want to. I don't want to cut anyone off. Is, does anyone have any questions or comments? That's why Sir Tim uh, Vern Poitras termed it termed the biblical theology as the multi-perspective, you know, aspect yeah. of because because of this. Yeah. No, that's really good. So, so if you're reading Vern Poitras, he will mention um, multi-perspective on biblical theology. Um, yes, excellent, excellent. Um, Whereas others, so and maybe Sonny's familiar, but if you're familiar with uh, James Hamilton, he 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 yes. understands um, uh, the major theme in all the scripture is salvation through judgment. Jesus That's Christ. how he yeah. would define. Yeah, and so we could agree or disagree, but he's trying to put together these different relationships. Um, John Frame says it's the lordship. Lordship is the central idea. Um, uh, so there's different views. There's different views. Uh, I think Vellum, yeah. So Vellum and um, Vellum and Gentry, they say kingdom through covenant. <laughs> so so, that, so what they're doing is they're taking those two, and actually kingdom through covenant implies God's presence. So they're they're saying the major motif is uh, is I'll just write this out here. Um, kingdom. through covenant, okay? And so this, of course, this infers, this infers, of course, presence, right? So they are taking these three and they're synthesizing. So it's, it's crazy. So there's, so then this is where you will get different perspectives on framework, you have covenant theology, you have dispensationals, you have progressive dispensationals, you have classic dispensationals, you have new covenant theology. So there's a lot of different things. So that's 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 also that's a discussion and 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 rubric. Um, uh, I shouldn't say rubric. Result from a study in biblical theology. Okay. So um, in our biblical theology tonight, I will I will share some of my I'll, I will share some of my cards for, for you. Um, in this course, we will not be arguing for what framework is really correct, okay? We, we, no doubt we will have those discussions, um, but we're, we're focused more on the history of Revelation. We'll touch on maybe, maybe at the end, but I don't, wanna, I don't want to turn it into a debate over you know, dispensational, progressive dispensational, new covenant, uh, classic covenant, um, uh, all those different things. We can have another course for that where we really go through and look at these different frameworks. This course, we're focusing on the, the fundamentals, what the history of Revelation is. Now, we will touch on the discussion of covenant. So perhaps we'll have a short discussion next week or in two weeks because um, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, literally, literally Old Covenant, New Covenant. So in, in, in looking at history of Revelation, we have to discuss this idea of covenant, and, and maybe maybe you 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 read what Voss mentions about covenant. Okay, so um, but in talking about covenant, we should not we should not say oh um uh you know you're going to talk about this or that because uh um uh even within let's say the debate between dispensational and and covenant theology, right? Um. My professor, I went to a dispensational school, then I went to a covenant school. So I went to both. Okay, so I have both. I have both sides. I have both sides. Um, my professor was progressive dispensational, and they were arranging it by covenant. So, so even even in 
even saying dispensational covenant theology, you still are interacting with um, uh, your, 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 the issue is not um, outside of this concept of covenant. Everyone must deal with covenant because covenant is fundamental. And I hope that you'll see that, that covenant is fun fundamental. And then we can look at different perspectives within that. But this concept of covenant, what we'll see soon is that the covenant, the concept of covenant is fundamental to the history of revelation. Okay. Not, not, not discussing the results of, of how we arrange that, but just the reality of this covenant. Okay. And so there's a lot of references to covenant and we will go through there. Um, so uh, I hope I'm making sense. Uh, let me ask any questions or comments or, or, or anything else before we go on. Yeah, Tim. I, I have a question on this kingdom through covenant and presence, yeah. Tim. But since this is the last part of the syllabus, I will reserve my yeah. questions when you get there. Yes. I may be yes. going ahead. Okay. No, because I, no doubt you will have questions concerning this. So write the questions down. Okay, write the questions down. Um, we do not have time to go into all of those debates. We just we will put, we will die. We will we will never make it. We will still be at the starting line. Okay. So what I want to say is that we will discuss save your questions. We will discuss some of them at the end of the semester. We can have other on Sunday night. We can have other discussions about th these related issues. Okay. So um, I don't want to just chop you off and say let's not discuss it because um, I, I do think these are very important questions and. These are important debates to have, but we just, we, I have to protect our time in the class because we have specific content. So we will seek to have maybe other workshops. You know, perhaps what you could say is you could ask, you could ask um, uh, EVST and also uh, CGST to let's have a course on, let's have biblical theology part two and let's, we'll discuss the frameworks and the whole class will be the different frameworks, what they say. And then we can, you know, that I would love to do that. So. Maybe perhaps you can you can speak to Koya Boyet, Dr. Boyet, and that can be for another another elective at CGST. So uh, that's all I will say for there. Okay, um, moving on here. Okay, um, so I'm not going to go into all of these the, the the course the course schedule. It's self-explanatory. This is to give you a guide of what is due. So um, be sure that you're staying on top. Okay, be sure that you're staying on top. I'm going to be better at sending warnings and um, uh, and recommendations to be doing your assignment. The reality is if you do not stay on top of your assignments, you will die. That's the reality. You will never be, it will become such a big burden. You, it will bury you, it will bury you. Figurado, it will bury you. Okay, so the key is to, is to turn your assignments in each week now. So tonight is due um, the reading report number one, um, there was some confusion. So everyone needs to turn it in today. If you, if you, there was a misunderstanding, you didn't have it. I will give mercy. Last time I gave mercy for a month, this time, one day long tomorrow, you need to read and turn it in moving forward. No mercy, not because I don't care, but because it sometimes when there's mercy, it just, it's going down. So we will be strict. And so each week, just just do your assignment. Don't wait till Monday to do your assignment. When the class when the class finishes tonight, ah, tomorrow I will start my assignment. If you have that mentality, you will be able to make it. Okay, you will be able to make it. So, um, so tonight is reading report one, and and next week will be scripture reading report one and also reading report two. Okay, so this will be a, this is a heavy this is a heavy homework assignment. Uh, course, okay? There's a lot of work that will be turned in. The final exam will not be so big, okay? Because I am going to take all your time in the assignments. If you turn in all the assignments, you're faithful to the assignments, you, you do a good effort, you will pass a good, a good grade on the course, okay? If you, do, if you don't really do so well, the final comes, you do well in the final, it's still Sayang, you will not do so well, okay? So what I'm trying to say is that every week, work on the assignments, number one. Number two, Sunday night, we will meet to ask your questions. So what I recommend to you is you, you come and study together with your fellow classmates on Sunday night. Um, I would do the assignment ahead of time. And then if you stuck, if you're stuck, you can, you can um, also meet on Sunday night. Now I will also offer this. I cannot sit in 
But if you want to meet as a group, because later you will, you, we will create groups for you. If you want to come together and read or ask questions together on another night, I can set you up on a Zoom session, okay? So I can set you up on a Zoom session, um, but you need to give me a time ahead of time to set you up and then I will make you the host or the co-host and I will leave, okay? So um, you need to plan that and, say, and send, say, Kuya Tim, can we do a Zoom session work, working together on, on Thursday night, seven to nine or um, eight to 10, okay? Fine, I will, I will set it up. And then you need to come in. I will give someone the, the I will give someone the keys, and I will leave. Okay, and then you can just exit out once, once, um, uh, once you're done. Okay, so we can also do that. Um, that's the other recommendation for you. Really work together in groups. You really need to work together in groups. You will be you will motivate each other to finish. Okay, so th that's all I will say. Um, any questions or comments before we move on for, for this yep, the sir. course schedule? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I am a bit uh, confused about uh, the uh, scripture reading report. Uh, what, what do you mean? Will we choose our own uh, uh, book in the Bible or there's an assigned uh, yeah. reading? No, great, great question. So, so just like last week when I posted the reading report, tonight or tomorrow morning, I will post a scripture reading report. Scripture okay. reading report reading is essentially the, the, the text that we will study in class. I will have you read them ahead of time, maybe make some observations. It's not, it's, it's not going to, the purpose of the scripture reading report is just to make you familiar with this, the passages of scripture that we will study. It's not meant to take a lot of time. Even it should only take you like maybe one hour, including observations. It's not meant to take it's only meant to make you familiar with what we're going to study. So great question, Jesus, yeah. But, uh, sorry, is that still different with the working tracing theme in which using yes. the book, is that different? Yeah, yeah. Wow. so yeah, so yeah, so that, so that's why it's, it's, it's heavy on the work part. Okay, there's no research paper. There's no research paper. The, the, the tracing the group project, you will trace the theme. And so I will give you specific, on week three, I will give you specific, um, instructions we will go through that um so how to trace the theme your groups i know people wanted to start early with the groups but you know i don't want you to do that yet i want you to get used to doing these other I, i'm still i'm easing you into the water so you're taking steps down into the water and soon it's going to be to your deck okay so i just want us to take baby steps as we go down into, into the water before the the riptide takes us out to sea, okay? Because you'll be swimming for a while, okay? So, um, but uh, the, the group project, you work together. It's it's not going to be really hard. It's just going to be time consuming because I want you to see that big picture and I want to, you to see I want you to see how themes work together, how you research a theme, um, how you develop a theme in scripture, and so you need to work as a group. So I'll give you more instructions on week three, okay? Then I will proceed since we are touching now on the assignment, sir. So can uh, I will just a bit confused also with the email that you uh, gave to us. Uh, in the email, in the assignment, you, you use their .org and the other one in the, I think that in the beginning of the course outline, you use .com. So we're we're gonna really send that. The, we get what email we're gonna use. Oh, wow. Oh, Timothy's, so that's a typo. No, that's a typo. Yeah. So this is a typo here. I'm sorry. Thank you for asking. This should be yeah. .org. ORG, not it's a, .com. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a typo. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's why later this afternoon, uh, 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 a while ago, uh, when I sent my, I, I sent in the two uh, emails. So I sent with the .com and I sent in uh, .org. Dot org. Okay, so you there is no converge.com. So that that's a typo. Okay. So actually, the reason why there's a typo is I switched from, you actually can send it to interpreting the word at gmail.com or timothyass at converge.org. And the reason why there's two is because we're using the Google Drive. Actually, in, a, in an ideal situation, Jesus, I only wanted to use Microsoft products, but, but the Microsoft is more secure on the, on, the, on the cloud drive and it's harder to access. So at least for the time being, we will use the, the Google Drive. You can share it with others like that. Um, the, I tried before the Microsoft and it's really hard. People are, it's very hard to go there. It's very, it's very safe. Okay, so 
Um, that's why I have two, I have two emails. So you can use interpreting the word at gmail.com um, because if you're using Gmail products, it's easy or Timothy asset converge.org. So the Timothy asset converge.org is actually Microsoft outlook. So, yeah, so I, I actually prefer all Microsoft products. Um, but, um, I recognize that we're still adjusting to technology and actually just to give you a plug one day, maybe in several years, we will use, we will even migrate away from Facebook. We'll migrate away from, um, even zoom and it will just be on, it's called Microsoft teams. It really has everything is in one place. So, but there's an adjustment. So I, what I want us to do right now, Jesus, is just to practice this and then later, Later, we will maybe in one or two years we will switch to Microsoft Teams because really it's the chat, the 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 files, the cloud drive, the Zoom. It's all really in just one location. It's really it's beautiful. So, um, yeah, good good question. Th thank you for that clarification. Uh, any um, let let me go ahead and let me go down to the assignments so then we can at least ask the questions for the assignments. So now we're on to um. um let me just talk through here because maybe this will answer some questions, Jesus. And then, and then um, if there's any other questions you can ask. So um, uh, requirements for the course, number one, attendance. Okay. There is no, there is no late attendance in uh, my class. Okay. Um, you're required to watch or to attend live all of the sessions, all 16 sessions. Okay. So that means if you show up, 25 minutes late or one hour late to class, that's fine. You need to go back and watch the first hour. Okay, so that really, that's that's a requirement that I'm going to have for all of us. Okay, so so if you sh if if you have a bad connection and you you watch from six to eight and then you lose the last hour, you need to watch that last hour. Okay, so um, in one sense, this is very nice because people will lose a lecture and then Sayang, but we, we don't lose any lectures. Okay. So every class will be recorded at the end of the semester. I will have a form that you will sign. I read, I watched live or delayed all sessions. Okay. So everyone should watch live or delayed all sessions, all, all three hours. I mean, it's going to be less than three hours because I edit, I cut out wasted time. So it's, but, but you should watch, all, all, all of the sessions. Okay. Um, the, the next thing is that, you know, the only exemption for not attending live is if you have very poor internet connectivity um, or if you have a special excuse because not tonight, but in the future, we will have breakout sessions. So really everyone needs to attend live. Okay. So people should be attending live unless your internet connection is bad or if you have um, an exemption, okay? So um, attendance is 100%, okay? It's 100%. Um, secondly is the homework. And so homework is 40% of the grade. Homework is 40% of the grade. So if you turn in all your scripture readings and reflection on time, you took, you're took turning your textbook readings on time and it's just those who took my class that next year, I'm not trying to kill you. If you do four paragraphs per, question and it's good it's just good content whatever it is even if i disagree you can get a very good grade in this class okay if you do not turn in the assignments or you turn them in late sayang it will be very hard for you you cannot climb out of that hole because it's the, the, the whole point of this course is each week you are putting into practice you are studying you're preparing in advance for the lectures okay uh, you will receive exponential fruit in doing these assignments and the judgment will be so great upon you just because it's 40% of the grade. Okay. It's the same thing with the group project. That's 20%. So, you know, you literally could, you literally could get a zero on the final exam. You could get a zero on the final exam and get an 80 in my class. <laughs> Does everyone understand that you can, you can get a zero on the final exam and get an 80 in my class, okay? But if you do not turn in the assignments, if you get a zero on the homework, you will, you will fail the class. You will get a 40% on the class, okay? So what, what, I, what, I, what I mean to say is that doing 
doing the, the faithful daily work each week, you will get a very good grade, okay? I'm turning it on time each week. And when you come to the final, you can just attend and turn in the final and leave. <laughs> and you will pass. So anyway, uh, that uh, I, you should not do that. You should still study. I, I want you to strive your best in everything, if that's the case. A any questions or comments? Any uh, questions Thomas, or comments? Team, uh, yes, team go ahead. what time is your deadline? Shall we follow the CGST deadline in submission at 12 midnight? So there, so 12 midnight when? What's the date there? For, uh, no, it's not written here. Uh, usually in CGST, when we turn in our assignment, it's the deadline is midnight of that day. Okay, so um, thank you for that question. And maybe I don't have it here. I'm sorry if I don't have that here. I'm sorry. Um, why is this freezing here? Um, it should be, I, I want... The assignments to be turned in, I will add that. Let me let me let me um, um, let me make a correction here. You, I should receive your email. Five fifty nine fifty nine is fine. Uh, anything after six p.m. it's late, and the reason for that is because each week we, are, the reading prepares you for the lecture. Because it's a hard reading as well, I want you to ask your questions so that I can help guide you through the reading. So the benefit is just not for the content. The, the benefit is also to help you because it's hard reading. Okay, so so and we just we're going to discuss. So each each week it's due five fifty nine p.m. Monday, right before class starts. Okay, um, so that when you come to class, you're prepared, you're able to interact, you're able to ask questions. Um, so that's the requirement. And and I'm sorry if I do not have that there. Maybe it's later, but I will I will add I will post a revised syllabus um uh later tonight or tomorrow morning so 5 59 p.m is the deadline each week yeah great question henry thank you um any other questions or comments great okay so grading scale is just the same as cgst no different so just be aware of uh of the grading scale and i'm not trying to beat you up so just follow this um you know i'm not i'm not out to get you if you if you turn in good work and you, I can tell you're making an honest effort, you're struggling. There's, you know, I proverbial, proverbially speaking, there's blood on your assignment that you emailed to me. Then I then I will I will recognize that and I will and I will um, reward you for that. Okay, so I'm not expecting excellence. I'm not trying to trick you up. I am expecting good effort. I mean, I I am expecting hard work. Okay, um, Zoom class. So. Tonight, someone had asked for the link and I shared it. That will be the last time, okay? Your link is here, <laughs> uh, no more. <laughs> so the reason for that is because like today I had some issues and I was preparing, we had some issues with the internet. I cannot be worried about sending other people links. You know, you're sending me a private message. So the link is here, the link's posted on the Facebook group. It's also now in the chat. So. I will not share it again. Now, if your classmate shared it with you, fine, that's fine, but I will not respond again, okay? So I understand this was the first semester, uh, but moving forward, um, uh, the Zoom link is here. Save it, save it, save it to your desktop. Just save this to your desktop. It's always gonna be there, okay? Um, uh, um, the other areas, so we have, the, uh, we have the, the other areas, these are the other areas where you're gonna get all your information. The Facebook group, the messenger chat and YouTube, okay? Um, I'm actually not going to, 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 to live on, on this Facebook group. I'm not going to, I'm just going to upload later to YouTube, okay? There's just, uh, there's issues when I, when I, when I, and then it's not, the quality is not so good and I can't, I can't screen share with Facebook my screen because I'm already screen sharing with Zoom, if that makes sense. So I can't, so it's just the reality is, is that um, we will just upload it to YouTube later. And um, um, uh, the goal will be every day by the next day, it will be uploaded, okay? Um, so just look for the video. If you can't attend live, look for the video by the next day, okay? Um, all announcements will be posted on um, the, the biblical theology conversation 
in Facebook Messenger and also Facebook group. I really recommend, I recommend that you regularly, you regularly check. I, I just really recommend that you check those two. I just really recommend that. Just make it a commitment to check that. Um, all the information's on Facebook group. Um, I would just really, I would really recommend that. Check it daily, just check it daily um, because sometimes I'm posting new information. So um, all of the backups and all of the updates will be here. So like I will revise the syllabus. I'm not going to revise it on Facebook, uh, Facebook group. It's just too much work. I will revise it and put the newest version on Google Drive. So if you're looking for the most up-to-date um, handout, the most up-to-date, whatever it is, I'll post it one time on Facebook group, but I'm not going to keep updating. It's, it's hard um, to, 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 to revise. I will just... I will just drag and drop into Google. So Google Cloud Drive is really where you will have the most up-to-date revised um, file, okay? The other thing is that you always have access to that. So even when you graduate this class, unless something happens, I want to continue to give you access to that because when we teach this course again, we will slowly develop, we will have more resources. Um, I always want you to have access to that. So if we move it, I will let everyone know. Um, but the Google Cloud Drive will be one place where you will always be getting uh, even new resources that we find in biblical theology after the class is done. So um, we do hope that even if you just take this, even if this is the only class you ever take with me, I, I want us to be continuing to be communicating, to be sharing information um, because I learn new, I'll change maybe a perspective of mine. And so I want, I want everyone to be involved in that as well, okay? Um, Next is the email. So submit all assignments via Word doc. Um, I don't think anyone has submitted through pages, but you can if you want. If, you, if you're using a Mac, you can use pages, a pages file or a docx file. Um, if you're using the Google, the Google, um, the Google uh, Word doc as well, you can use that. Um, but everyone should be able to access internet. And on, on the internet, you have a free Microsoft Word program so you can use microsoft word on does everyone know that someone raise your hand if you did not know if you did not know that um there's a free microsoft word on their website did everyone know that so i'm assuming you know that okay so you can create a microsoft outlook account and you and you have the ability to use microsoft word on the web browser okay you don't have to download it if you have good internet, you can go in there, you can save your files, you can use their, their cloud drive. It's like two gigs or two gigabytes or something like that. So I just, everyone just be aware, you have the, the newest form of Microsoft Word on their web browser. You just have to create an Outlook account, okay? So um, if you were not aware of that, send me a private message. I can help you show, I can help show you how to do that, okay? So just like Google has its own, um, uh, doc doc file app. So does Microsoft on their on their web browser. Okay. Um, general rules and uh, guidelines. So use this. Just FYI, use you. You can email using those two. Okay. You can email me using those two all the time. I use this one more. So if you want a quick answer, Converge is the best one to use. That that, that will just go right right to me immediately. Um, okay, uh, general rules and guidelines. Assignments turned in late will receive a five point a five point percentage deduction per week that it is handed in late from the total grade. Okay, so what that means is all your assignments will will, will receive. It's going to be it's like on a ten point scale. So you'll get your, it's it's out of ten points. Okay, so I maybe I'll take point five, maybe I'll take point two five, because when you divide. So for example, if you divide 9.5 by 10, you get 95%. Does everyone, is everyone tracking there with me? So if you're late, I'm gonna take off half a point, 0. 0.5, okay? And you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. But when you divide that out, it's already a 95 from 100, okay? And then if you have other points that I take off, your grade lowers, okay? So just be aware on all your assignments, unless it's a project, so the scripture reading, the reading report, Typically, I'm going to use 10 points. Maybe sometimes it'll be 
um, it'll be 15 point or 20 point, but I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be 10 point. So um, you need, if you want to see your actual percentage grade, you need to divide nine or eight or 8.5 by 10. And that will give you your actual percentage for that assignment. Okay. So you would divide nine divided by 10 times 100. That will give you your percentage grade. Okay. So I made all of us know that I'm just reviewing a lot. So, um, but it's five points per week. So if you turn in your assignment four weeks late last semester, I was merciful. I was so merciful. If you turn it in four weeks late this semester, that's already an 80%. The best you can get is 80%. Okay. Because it's, 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 it's uh, 0.5 per week. So that's two points minus 10, eight, eight divided by 10 is 80%. Okay. So just be aware if you turn it in two months late, uh, I think it's already the lowest <laughs> it's below passing. So just be aware. Okay. Um, next statement. I want everyone to be very aware of this. Okay. I was again, very merciful last semester. I have nothing against posting other things, but I'm going to be very strict this semester because the, the conversation goes very fast <laughs> downhill. Last semester, I saw that. So um, if you're posting, do not post anything not directly related to either the Facebook group or Facebook uh, me group message. So it must be directly related to biblical theology. If in doubt, if in doubt, do not post. Send me a private message. Who are you, Tim? I want to post this. Can I post it? And I'll say yes, or I'll say no. Because maybe there's a sermon on biblical theology. You can share that, okay? A sermon on Calvinism, no, <laughs> okay? A sermon on eschatology, no. A sermon on biblical theology applied to eschatology, okay. All right, so, um, uh, you know, a, an article on biblical theology in preaching, okay, all right? Um, uh, Something else, no. So you, you, if, you, if you're unsure, message me, but I'm gonna be strict. I will ask you immediately to, to delete it. And if there's multiple infractions, I will take off points from your grade. And it's not because, it's not because I'm trying to be mean. It's just because what happens is, is number one, all of the conversation clutters our timeline. So if someone is going back looking for a link or looking for an announcement, it's so hard for them to find. If you have a if you have a 20, uh, 20 text conversation and I first mentioned I first had an announcement, maybe it's lost. Okay. And so I'm being strict because I don't want those announcements. I don't want the files. I don't want the timeline to be lost. Okay. So um uh I'm really asking you, and I'm going to hold everyone accountable. We can only post what's directly related to biblical theology. Um, and if you want to have a discussion, what I recommend is do not have a discussion in the group chat, okay? You can create a, a thread on the Facebook group, and then you can make your comment, and th that's the whole point of the Facebook group. Then you can then you can have a whole conversation. It goes long, 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 long. But then when you go to the timeline, it's just one, it's just one post and then they can go down. Um, again, the purpose is for, so that we cannot lose valuable information. Uh, it's just really, we need to really be strict with that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold everyone accountable. All right, next is plagiarism will not be tolerated. And so there's not so much plagiarism here, um, um, but I, I, I just wanna have that statement there. You can read what plagiarism is. Um, you will be working in a group, but all I want to say is that on your group, your group project, you can work together in every assignment, in the reading, in the scripture reading, in the reflection, and in the project, you can work together, but you still need to create your own document and you do your own work, okay? Is everyone tracking with me? What you cannot do is work together in a group and then say, oh, I have no time. Send me your document. I will copy paste. No. That's that that's already plagiarism. That's already cheating. Okay. So you can work together. You can ask a question. You can even say, Oh, I like what you said. Can I write that down? Okay, fine. And you can just type out maybe one sentence. That's fine. But what you cannot do is just 
I ran out of time or I'm struggling here. Send me your document. I will copy paste. You cannot do that. There is no copy pasting this semester. Even when later on you're going to have to write out the scripture when you're doing a, a theme chase, do not copy and paste. You have to type it out. Tim, it's work. Yes. The point of typing it out is you become familiar with the passage. As you type out, it causes you to think. The typing is another sense. The looking is another sense. Okay, so when you copy and paste, you short circuit all your different senses. Okay, when, when you're teaching or preaching, can you copy paste? Yes. In my class, can you copy paste? No, zero. You should never copy paste. And to be, to be honest with you, I will find out. <laughs> I, I've been doing it for a long time. I will see the different clues that you copy and paste it. So um, it's just in my class because could there be one in, in, could there be one situation where you could copy and paste? Perhaps, but because there's, there, there is, it's just, I'm just going to make it a straight rule. No copy pasting, whatever passage. Of, if you want to include a passage of scripture, great. Type it. <laughs> Okay, so that's going to be my requirement. That's going to be my requirement for a certificate of theology, master of arts, non-accredited, master of arts accredited. No copy paste. Okay, Henry, do you have a question? I think. Uh, yeah. Okay, clarification. Do not copy and paste. How about the verse of the Bible that we want to copy from a Bible program? Yeah, I don't. I, there's two reasons why I don't want to do that. Um, no, number one. Number one, um, uh, it, it, when, you, when you're doing an assignment, especially at the academic level, okay, when you copy and paste and it, and it, it, it has d different fonts, it has different subscripts, it does not look professional. So number one, from a pr professional perspective, it doesn't look professional, okay? It doesn't look smooth and clean like this file here. It's very it's the same, it's unified, that's number one. Number two is that um, if the passage of scripture, like in the project, you, you'll be typing a lot of passage of scripture and highlighting that theme. I want you, when you type it out, you're, you're, you're experiencing the passage. It's taking you time, you're reflecting upon it. So, so there's a learning perspective there, number two. And then, and then number three, um, if, for example, you are, if you're referencing a passage of scripture in your reflection report or your scripture reading, the standard academic and scholarly thing to do is not to print it out. You just, in parentheses, put mark, whatever, whatever, okay? When, when I am grading your assignments, I have, your, I have it down here and I'm making comments. I have my Bible screen to my side. Literally, I just type in the passage and because I'm going to, even if you put the passage there, Henry, I still look at the, the context. So I'm still typing it in. So the standard, the standard academic protocol is if you're referencing a passage, just put the reference. It's so easy for me because I will do that no matter what. Okay, so professionally for learning and then also for uh, you're not saving me time because Sigurado, I will still look at because even I will look for the cross reference as well. So not all the time. Or if, I, if you just say that I know the passage, okay, it's good, no, no problem. So even sometimes I know the passage, it's fine. So um, yeah, that's just what we will do, okay? Just reference the passage. If it's incredibly important, then type it out. Um, but you know, um, I just don't want the copying and paste. And here's the thing for everyone, from a teacher perspective, from a, from a administration perspective, not having the copy paste, it looks very professional. If Ched comes and looks at our assignments, if ATA, Asian Theological Association, they look at the assignments and it's very unified, it's neat, they say, wow, this is, this is good. If you have all these different fonts, each, each student is doing their own style, they do not, that's why with research, research paper it's one standard rubric because it's very professional it's very professional so um that's not to say in your ministry use copy paste i use copy paste in my ministry most of the time when i am doing my preparation here telega when i am preparing my notes i type it out telega i type it out when i am referencing uh when i'm quoting 
I don't, I rarely copy paste. So something to think about. If you struggle with typing, my recommendation for you is to do a typing class. That is the most professionally beneficial thing you can do. Do a typing class, number one. Um, number two, we will do a workshop later. I will show you how to set up a second monitor so that literally you can have your PDF, your Bible program on one screen and you're typing in your second screen, okay? So we will prepare a workshop to teach you how to use uh, a laptop and a second monitor or um, uh, um, a desktop and a second monitor, okay? So we will, we will prepare a, a workshop for that, okay? So I'm sorry, I'm belaboring the point, but I just, I don't want copy paste. I understand, you know, I copy paste. It's not that it's bad. It's just, um, well, sometimes if you're cheating, it is <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, but it's just more that it's it's for for those reasons. Okay, so thank you, Henry. And let me just really emphasize: no one here from last semester. Um, uh, I'm not set with anyone from last semester that did it. And actually, when you receive your final grade, um, I'm not going to take any points off for that. So so some submitted with copy paste. It's fine. I will just we'll just move on. But moving forward. EVST, CGST, we don't want to copy paste. We want to be professional. We want Ched to be a Christian testimony. Wow, they are above our standards. So that's what we want to do here. Yeah, the other thing is really just follow the assignment pattern. I put the patterns online uh, on the Google Drive. I will include a pattern for the scripture reading. Follow the pattern because again, for our record keeping, for Ched, for ATA, for any other school, they, Telega, academically, they want to see the rubric is followed. And when you have, this is kind of crazy, but when all the students have the same rubric, they say, wow, this is good. We, we want to partner with an institution that is consistent. So um, follow the, the, the pattern. It might not be, it might not be the most beautiful, but it's, it's a pattern and it will look really good to those that are assessing us because eventually, um, CGST, you know, my prayers for CGST to continue to uh, expand, and I want to help CGST develop maybe in their biblical studies, all for a you know different uh, higher level program. I want to I want to help. I want to be involved. In that. And same with EVST, we want to develop our our ourselves academically. Um, that will also bring us more students, and also that will develop us professionally. Um, and so. Um, let's just follow the rubric and, and the pattern that, that we have laid before us. And then uh, lastly, um, just always keep backups. Always keep backups. Don't, th don't throw anything out. Don't discard anything. Always keep all your assignments. I will send back a graded PDF. Keep it. Save it in one folder, okay? Because um, if there's a question with lateness, you know, or if there's, or if there's a, an issue, we have a backup, you know, so... If, if there's a problem, let's say I have a computer failure and I lose the files and I go back to you and I say, I need the assignment. And you say, oh, I deleted all my, this here is, is to say, no, you need to keep a backup. So whether you have somehow backup your files, if you have external drive, save it on your computer and also a cloud drive. If you need help setting up a cloud drive, that's, I can help you. But I back all my files up. Every one of us should back up on a cloud drive. It's free for five, 15 gigabytes on Google. Just save, don't save pictures, don't save videos, just save your files. You will have limitless for your files. Okay, so I am requiring that you have a backup in the event that something is lost. There should always be a backup, okay? Um, that's it, that's, that's all I have. Let me just check here um, and then we'll take our, our last break. Okay, not right now, but we will be sharing this later. I have a resource bibliography of really good books if you wanted to invest in biblical theology specific themes. So some of them are already free, some of them cost money. And so uh, these books here, um, I'm not gonna share this yet, maybe in two or three weeks once I have, but these are some other books that you can, um, that you can purchase or you can consider that are excellent. Now. They could be excellent resources. The other possibility is that they are, so for example, here, um, Julius Wellhausen's Prolegomena to the History of Israel. I have this cited, and actually there's the free book on Project Gutenberg because he is often quoted by 
Voss. He is a liberal. We do not accept his 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 uh, position, but but because we're academic, and in case you want to see the context by which Voss has cited him, I'm including his book as well. Okay, so I will post on here the the good and probably the bad, <laughs> the good or the I should say the good and the scholarly. So um, just to be aware, and but I will make that note. So looking down here, I have the note. This, this resource is often referenced by Gerhardus Voss. Voss's purpose is to contradict and provide an apologetic in reaction to liberal critical view concerning Israel's history and thus redemptive history. The benefit of this, res of, of this resource is to better understand the opposing, is to understand the opposing position for apologetic purposes, okay? So what I want us to see here is, number one, I have a typo that I gotta fix. Um, but number two is that is that um, uh, maybe you want to see more of why Voss was saying what he was saying. So you can read this resource, okay? Um, I have not yet read it, although if I did my work in Old Testament, they would require me to read it. So this would be a required read if you're doing advanced PhD work in Old Testament studies. This would be one of the works that's required because it is it is a scholarly uh, uh, groundbreaking work in the academic world, although we would disagree with the conclusion he, he, he makes, okay? So we do wanna offer multiple perspectives because we're not afraid. We're not afraid, we always wanna provide a defense, okay? So uh, any last questions? That's all I have for the syllabus. Um, any last questions before we take a break and then we begin the reading? We're a little bit behind, it's okay. We will get caught up, don't, never fear, okay? Any questions or comments that you may have? 